Hello, my name is Angela Douglas and I am the Deputy Chief Scientific Officer and I'm going to introduce today the um, IQIPS webinar. Delivery of high quality patient care should be at the heart of everything that we do in the healthcare sector. To enable this, we must be engaged in a process of continual self-assessment for service quality with a view to achieving continuing and sustained improvement. Accreditation of diagnostic and scientific services is now available through a number of schemes run by UCAS as the national accreditation body. Accreditation is a powerful method of ensuring that relevant standards for service delivery are met and that systems, organisations and personnel continue to operate with competence and integrity. In this context, the IQIP standard covers a range of physiological disciplines, including audiology. Independent assessment against this standard by UCAS assessors leads to recommendations for improvement and eventually to the award of accreditation. However, achievement of accredited status is only one milestone, yet an important one on an ongoing journey of quality improvement. The cycle of accreditation assessment ensures that accredited bodies are continually assessed for compliance with the required standards. Over the course of this brief webinar, you will hear from a senior UCAS assessment manager and a patient and provider representatives who will describe the value they see in the accreditation process. They will talk about the holistic nature of the assessment process, which examines all aspects of the patient experience. From booking an appointment to aftercare, you will also hear about the reassurance both patients and healthcare professionals receive from the accreditation process, particularly with regards to unregulated professions. Most of all, you will hear about the confidence accreditation provides at a time when patients may feel at their most vulnerable and in need of reassurance. In NHS England, whilst recognising the financial and operational challenges facing service commissioners and providers, we are particularly keen to encourage increased take up of accreditation of physiological services as an increasingly important aspect of quality assurance arrangements. We believe that NHS providers should seek accreditation to demonstrate their commitment to providing safe and effective audiology and other physiological science services. And that's part of quality improvement initiatives, NHS commissioners should be looking to use accreditation to identify and procure audiology and other physiological science services from organisations which demonstrably meet the required standards for high quality service provision. Thank you, and we hope you find the webinar valuable. This webinar aims to provide the context of accreditation and how the IQIP scheme can assure confidence in physiological service delivery, whether in the NHS or independent practice. You'll hear about the benefits of accreditation directly from the providers and patient representation. My name's Laura Booth and I'm a Senior Assessment Manager uh, managing the IQIP scheme for UCAS. So why does accreditation matter? UCAS accreditation assures confidence in the physiological service delivery that is commissioned ultimately ensuring the safety, effectiveness and quality assurance of the end user. By ensuring that accreditation is included in the requirements for a service provider, UCAS can help provide the confidence that as commissioners, you are engaging with providers who have integrity, effective clinical governance, financial stability, sustainable resources, delivering the best quality of patient-centred care that is assessed through an annual cycle of accreditation assessment. UCAS is appointed by the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy in Government to deliver assessments to recognise national and international standards. We provide independent conformity assessments of services, products, equipment, management systems, amongst other public interest activities. UCAS itself is peer evaluated every four to five years by international accreditation colleagues. 
The iQuip scheme was developed in 2012 and covers eight physiological disciplines, audiology, neurophysiology, GI physiology, respiratory and sleep physiology, vascular science, cardiac physiology, neurodynamics and vision science. UCAS performs regular independent assessment with award of and maintenance of accreditation. Physiological service customers are contracted into a defined accreditation process where assessments are conducted by impartial technical and peer and lay assessors leading to recommendations. Ongoing assessments are performed with sanctions where necessary, which ensures commissioners that the services they procure can be held to account. The IQIP standard itself was initially developed and is owned by the Accreditation Clinical Advisory Group, originally in conjunction with the Royal College of Physicians. The standard has five quality domains covering leadership and management, which focuses on clinical governance, audit and non-conformity management. The clinical domain ensures appropriate patient pathway management from referral to discharge or onward care, including outcome measures, clinical protocol development, implementation and review, information management systems and assurance of the quality of the test, interpretation and reporting processes. The patient feedback and experience is assessed, ensuring patient focused care, feedback and complaint management, competent consent processes and patient information development review and implementation. Facilities and resources covers recruitment, training, competence of staff, equipment, procurement and environment. And finally, the safety domain stipulates the requirements for robust systems in place relating to all areas of health and safety and risk management involved in the patient pathway. UCAS provides some pre-application support through a standard awareness course and dedicated email service. The IQIPS process consists of application on which the customer is assigned a UCAS assessment manager who works with them throughout the accreditation journey. There's an optional pre-assessment stage to determine the readiness for initial assessment. This is then followed by formal initial assessment, which is a combination of desktop review of documentation, followed by on-site review of the quality management system implementation and clinical and patient activity. Following the assessment, a recommendation is made to UCAS for offering accreditation and the customer works on closing out any formal mandatory findings raised at the assessment which when cleared enables the grant of accreditation by an independent decision maker. Once accredited, there is a cycle of accreditation annually to ensure continued compliance to the standard. The benefits of commissioning a UCAS accredited provider or a service engaged in the accreditation process is numerous. The IQIP scheme is recognised by the CQC. Assessments are performed independently and impartially. Outcomes of service delivery is monitored and assured which means any KPIs in place by the commissioning body are reviewed. A UCAS accredited service will have proactive risk and anticipation management in place, reducing the potential for serious incidents and less reactive practice. Cost savings and efficiencies can be seen when a service is engaged with UCAS, thus enabling them to deliver quality care within budgetary requirements. We'll now hear from two provider and patient representatives about the benefits they perceive accreditation to deliver. Hi, my name's Jo Walker, Chief Clinical Vascular Scientist at the University Hospitals of Leicester NHS Trust. I'm the Leicester Vascular Studies Unit Manager and Clinical Lead for the service. Our main role is performing specialist diagnostic ultrasound investigations. As ultrasound is an unregulated profession, I felt that it was vital to gain UCAS accreditation to provide assurance to our patients and stakeholders that we are providing a quality assured service. As a small department within a very large NHS trust, you can often feel overlooked when it comes to the support and development required to deliver a quality service. However, with statements from NHS England, CQC, and from our own professional bodies, all recommending that physiological services gain UCAS accreditation to the IQIP standard. This helps support my application to the directors of our clinical management group. At the start of our journey, I realised that although it seems like a huge undertaking, it was manageable by focusing on each domain for a gap analysis of our current service. It was also vital at this stage to involve the whole team to disseminate the work and to embed the IQIPS requirements into our everyday workload. By engaging with the whole team, 
This ensures that the UCAS standards are understood by everyone and gives staff the motivation during the accreditation journey and onwards. It's important to have an eye for detail to ensure the conformity across all documents and procedures and to have a good knowledge of existing processes within the immediate workplace and across the NHS Trust. The benefit of having the UCAS standards to work towards is that each part of the service can be broken down and mapped towards the quality standards. This can provide assurance where we can evidence what we already do but also serve to highlight any areas where we would change or update our procedures to meet IQIP's requirements. This was then a very good way to demonstrate to our senior management teams within the Trust where our service needed additional support or resource to deliver a quality service. In my case, we received additional funding to fully move on to an electronic reporting system for our diagnostic activity. This has transformed the way in which service users can access images and reports and also allows excellent monitoring and audit of our quality and performance. This is a real benefit with regards to proactive risk management as without these changes we had identified a few significant clinical risks. The UCAS standards now ensure that we are actively monitoring all areas of our service and utilise effective risk management process to assure patient safety and good clinical outcomes. I had to undertake the journey towards accreditation within my existing clinical and management role. Therefore, it took over 12 months preparation. However, going forward, as the processes are now embedded within normal service delivery and business planning, it will hopefully serve to be easier to maintain accreditation and to also make continuous improvement assuring quality going forward. The on-site assessments were both daunting and challenging for the first time as we have not had first-hand experience of anything similar but the UCAS assessment team are very professional and thorough as well as reassuring and supportive in both the pre-assessment planning stages and the on-site visit. In summary the UCAS accreditation journey has been both challenging and rewarding. It's given our whole team a huge sense of pride and achievement and has raised the profile of our vascular studies unit both locally and nationally. It's definitely a worthwhile and valuable experience. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Bernadette Parker. Um, I'm a consultant clinical scientist at the University Hospital in Coventry. We've been accredited by UCAS for all the services that we provide to patients within our audiology service for over eight years now, full stop. I believe we were one of the first um, audiology services to be accredited across all of the various aspects of the service that we provide. As part of our accreditation, um, we're obliged to show continuous improvement in the services um, that we offer to patients. This ensures that we are always focused on providing evidence-based care that benefits patients. Having to demonstrate that we meet a set of clear standards has enabled us to focus on ensuring that we maintain those standards year on year. We believe that this provides assurance to patients, commissioners and stakeholders that the services we provide are safe and effective. And most importantly, that the services we provide to patients actually result in a measurable benefit to the patients who use our services. So an example of that would be we provide, for example, a tinnitus support service and we were able to set a goal that at least 80 percent of our patients should have at least a one grade reduction in the impact that the tinnitus has had on their lives. Um, and that has assured our clinicians that they are providing a relevant service to patients in that cohort, which is really important um, when you're delivering services face to face to know that what you're doing is actually making a difference um, for each individual patient and for your patient group as a whole. Support to fund any changes to meet mandatory findings we've found has been much easier to secure when the evidence of a non-conformity is clearly visible um, against the UCAS standards that need to be met. And that has definitely benefited us over the, the eight plus years that we've been UCAS accredited. It is challenging. Um, having to maintain those standards year in, year out, having to evidence that every year um, is is a big task, but it has absolutely definitely been beneficial um, to our service and 
I really believe it has benefited patients. Um, another simple example is we provide patients at the end of their clinic appointment with us with a letter that's personalised to them outlining their individual care plan. It's very clear to the patient what has happened during the appointment and what's going to happen next. And that has been really lovely from a perspective as a clinician in a really positive way to be able to close the appointment for the patient so they know exactly where they're at um, and for the patient to be able to share that information when they go home to see their significant others. And that's quite a simple thing, but had a really big impact when we started to do that a few years ago. And there's that's one of a, a series of events that are small, but really effective in terms of improving that quality on a year on year basis. Um, and it, it does feel really good to be part of a service that is providing care at that quality assured level um, for everybody involved in that really. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deborah Southern and I'm a lay assessor for UCAS. So as Laura said earlier, why does it matter if you use an accredited service? Well, an accredited service is one where you can feel assured that the service is working to a standardized quality. As a lay assessor, I focus on how it would feel to be a patient in the service. This is everything from has the service helped me to find it in the first place? And how was it, how was it to actually get an appointment? Were the staff helpful and courteous? Did they look after me and keep me safe? I look to see how easy it is to get to the treatment room. Is there space for me? Would there be space for a companion or a wheelchair? Was it clean and tidy? Was there somewhere to wait? I want to know if the building is safe. Does it have up to date fire alarms and extinguishers? Do the alarms work? I try to cover all the little things that are important in addition to the clinical care that you'll receive. I discuss with the service how they get feedback and complaints from patients, how they respond and how they use that information to improve future performance. I often sit in on appointments with the patient's consent so that I can see how it is to be that patient on that day. I talk to patients who are there so they can share their experiences, not just of the day I'm visiting, but other times perhaps when they've been before. At the end of the assessment, I meet up with all the other assessors who focused on different aspects of the service and we compare notes and then we can decide if the service is working to the standard required and when necessary, give them guidance and support on areas that need improving. We check in every year to ensure the service keeps on working to the highest standards. As a lay person and a potential patient, you don't know what you're getting from any service provision. So ensuring patients can be seen by a UKES accredited service provides stakeholders and ultimately the patients with the confidence they're getting a truly effective, safe, and patient-centred service. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this webinar. We hope that this has been helpful in giving you a guide to understanding the basics around accreditation and the importance that uh, UCAS accreditation can provide to you in giving confidence uh, as a stakeholder in physiological service delivery. If there are any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at UCAS.